a vitrectomy. Presence of a detached posterior hyaloid face ensures completeness of vitrectomy as well as the incidence of lesser postoperative complications such as recurrent retinal detachments, retinal tears and development of epiretinal membranes. There are several techniques for inducing a posterior vitreous detachment intraoperatively during pass planar vitrectomy. In this video presentation, we demonstrate the technique of inducing posterior vitreous detachment, various intraoperative situations such as the presence of vitreoschisis, epiretinal membrane, premacular bursa and also the management of complications such as development of retinal tears and retinal hemorrhage during the procedure in patients with abnormal vitreoretinal adhesion. The first video clip demonstrates posterior vitreous detachment induction in a patient with recalcitrant diabetic macular edema using active suction of a 23 gauge cutter. The posterior hyaloid phase is delineated in this patient using Triamcinolon acetonide crystals, a technique akin to cloaking a ghost. In this patient, the PVD induction occurs very easily. A few residual crystals of Triamcinolon acetonide which will be left behind at the end of the procedure will contribute to reducing the postoperative inflammation and resolution of the spongy and cystoid macular edema as well as the subfovial serous detachments which are present in this patient. In this patient, the same technique of PVD induction is used. However, the posterior vitreous detachment is incomplete and a persistent attachment of the vitreous to the optic disc is seen. There are also Tramstinolone acetonide stained vitreous strands within the temporal arcade. The adherent vitreous strands in the macular area is peeled along with the internal limiting membrane. However, the thin strands of vitreous attached to the disc margin are left behind at the end of the procedure. This patient is a 32-year-old male who was referred for surgical management of a dense epiretinal membrane. The epiretinal membrane in this patient turned out to be a densely thickened and loosely adherent posterior hyaloid which separates easily during PVD induction and is excised, leaving a smooth and normal macular contour. Our next patient has a pre-existing posterior vitreous detachment with an epiretinal membrane over the macula. Preservative-free Triamcinolon acetonide is injected to identify any residual posterior hyaloid attachment to the retinal surface. There are thin layers of retinoschisis over the posterior pole which could be peeled easily, the internal limiting membrane also gets peeled off in this maneuver. This patient is a 72-year-old chronic diabetic with a posterior hyaloid face attached to the disc margin and also in a circular fashion to the parafoveal area within the temporal arcade. The posterior hyaloid face has separated over the macula within this area of attachment forming a premacular bursa. 
the posterior hyaloid membrane over the macula area is taut and could not be torn with the active suction of the 23 gauge cutter. An MVR blade is used to rip it open and a blunt spatula is inserted underneath to lift up the membrane to complete the posterior vitreous detachment. Inferiorly, the PVD induction results in the development of retinal hemorrhage and two areas of retinal tears as well as a localized retinal detachment. This is managed by perfluorocarbon liquid injection to flatten out the localized retinal detachment and barrage laser retinopexy is performed intraoperatively. The last clip in the series of cases demonstrates the use of autologous gluconated blood clumps for PVD induction. As with tramstilon acetonide, autologous gluconated blood comes will also coat the posterior hyaloid phase, making delineation of the PHF easier. The residual autologous gluconated blood clumps on the macular surface is utilized for internal limiting membrane peeling in this patient who underwent a combined phacovitrectomy for visually significant cataract along with vitreomacular traction. Thus, PVD induction must be performed carefully bearing in mind the various areas of normal and abnormal vitreoretinal adhesions. 
Adequate posterior vitreous detachment augurs an efficient and complete vitrectomy.